Hey, what's up, every, every <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to this video, and don't panic. Don't panic, but I'm in Photoshop. I know this is my channel that I usually do affinity photo stuff, but you need to see what Photoshop is up to. They're doing some cool stuff, and I'm hoping affinity grabs onto some of this stuff. Let's get into it, okay? First thing is I got this model here, right? And you'll see right now I have these options. I can select the subject, click on it. It's gonna do a selection for me, which looks pretty cool. Or I can just hit remove background. It's gonna do its thing and remove the background. And that selection is pretty good. Now the hair is pretty good in the hands there could be fixed. But if I put something behind her, like let's just draw in a box here, a blue box, and I'm gonna drag it underneath her in the layers panel here. You can see that this selection is pretty good all with one click. I'm a fan, they've been doing it for a while, but they're getting better with the AI. So let's go back here. Now here's where things get kind of crazy. I got this model, I got this wall behind her. I'm gonna use their generative fill, which is AI. So first what you have to do is make, you have to tell it like there's a selection. So you gotta say, hey, put something here. So I'm gonna click their marquee tool, the rectangular one. I'm just gonna draw out a box here. And I get this option here that says generative fill. If I click on that, I can describe what I want, or I can just, hit generate and it's gonna make something for me. But what I'm gonna say is graffiti on wall. And I'm gonna hit enter. And I'm on a really fast Mac with a really fast internet connection. So this is as fast as it's gonna go for right now. Uh, it's still pretty quick, but let's see what it comes up with. So it put this on the wall and it gives me three options. So I have this option, I have this option, and I have this option. Now I didn't tell it to say anything specific or uh, draw a picture, but this is what it did automatically. And I could always go and change the opacity of my layers panel so it fades on the wall a bit. Um, I could uh, play with blend modes, but that is what's going on with their AI in regards to adding things. Let's try one more. Let's say, uh, let's grab their lasso tool. I'm just gonna draw this out like this. I'm gonna say, uh, real flowers dying. No idea what this is gonna do. Generate, let's see what it comes up with. Oh, they've, we violated guidelines. Oh, I think I said, because I said dying. Real flowers growing out of wall. Uh, I don't know. Generate. Let's see what Photoshop comes up with. Let it do its thing. It's thinking. It's AI is thinking. Flowers out of a wall. Okay. It's actually not that bad. Let's check the next option. Okay, that's pretty good. That's just kind of weird. But that one's pretty good. That actually looks fairly realistic. Okay, so that's this portion. I wanted to show you this. Next, what do I got next? Next, we have the sky replacement. So it's the same thing um, as sort of what you're doing with removing the background or selecting a subject, but it can detect and replace the sky for you. And to do that, I have this picture selected. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to, uh, where is it? Where is it? Filter, no. View, no. 3D, no. Select sky. So I'm gonna go select sky. I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna detect the sky for me. And now you can see the sky has been selected. And generative fill, I'm gonna say red sky storm angry, sure. And click generate. And of course I could also make it a selection and replace it with another sky, but I'm gonna see what generative fill comes up with. And let's see uh, what it does here. What do you got for me AI? What do you got for me Photoshop? Okay, that looks not so realistic. Let's go to the next one. That's a little better. And that one's not too bad, but it doesn't look doesn't look fantastic. I don't I don't love that one. So let's uh, grab this tool here. I'm gonna put something in here and I'm gonna say uh, dog looking at sky. Generate. It's hit and miss right now. Some of these are really good and some of them don't make any sense. But it's not a bad idea to give you ideas or really to uh, to put something together. So let's see what it comes up with. I'm just gonna put another uh, something in this image just to see what it does. So now there's a dog looking at the sky and that actually looks pretty good. It's got the shadows on him there uh, from the grass. Let's see what they do. So you three options again. So let's pull this back and let's see what their next option is. Okay, there's another dog and another dog. I don't, uh, I don't hate it. I think maybe the first one looked the best. I like that one. So that's what's going on with that. Now, what else do we got? Okay, now we also have this going on. Now they've been doing this for a while. It's in beta as well but there's these neutral filters. So if I go, I have the picture of this model here, this headshot. If I go up to filter, neutral filters, 
I get these options of all these things I can do. So what I'm gonna do is go to Smart Portrait. I'm gonna turn that on. And here you can change the age, the hair. Let's change the age. Let's see how this goes. So it's detected her face. And I'm gonna crank the age up by, let's say 30. 30 years, I don't, I don't know what that means. So right now it's processing in the cloud, whatever that means. And let's look at her face and let's see what it does. Again, I'm running a very high-end Mac uh, with a very fast internet connection. So this is uh, how long it's taking right now and this is what it's doing. What's gonna be our result here? Okay, and I think that did a decent job. It aged her and it thinned her hair out a little bit. So what we'll do is let's pull that back to how she was. Let's 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 give her the uh, fountain of youth and let's pull her hair thickness all the way up to see what her hair does. I'm just curious. Let's pull up to 50. I don't think it's 50 strands. Let's see what hair thickness does. And that's pretty good. That's pretty cool. It filled her hair out pretty good. Now let's do eye direction. I'm gonna put it this way. I'm gonna pull it all the way to the left here. And let's see what it does. Uh, I don't know too much about that one, what that one really did. And they also have expressions. Let's change it to surprise. Let's crank it all the way up, which could give us nightmares. We'll see what this does. But you can see how it could be helpful on certain things. Okay, I don't know if she really looks surprised, but that's one of the things they can do, which is pretty cool. Um, they also have something called style transfer, where you can select something or use something predetermined. So I'm just going to take this and apply this particular style to her. Let's do this. Look more like an oil painting, I guess. Not bad, kind of cool. And again, you can change the strength so it goes higher or lower depending on what you're going for. So that's pretty neat. And one final thing I want to show you is, uh, oh, let me hit okay here. They have this photo, um, you can restore photos. So again, we're going to go to filter, neutral filters or neural filters. Am I saying that wrong? Uh, just feel, feel free to make fun of me in the comments if necessary. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go to photo restoration. I'm going to turn it on. Now you see how the photo looks right now. It's processing. It's doing its thing. Let's do scratch reduction from zero to, let's go to 15. So keep your eye on the photo. We're going to 15 and we're going to see how it does with these scratches. That's pretty, pretty amazing. The amount of uh, things it took away. Now, if you pull this all the way up, say I want to get rid of all these scratches. Let's crank it up to like 80 possible nightmares. Let's see. Yeah, not really effective. So it helps for sure to start doing the groundwork. Maybe let's put it to 10. Put that back. So that took a lot of them away originally. And if you pull, let's see, enhanced face. Let's pull enhanced face all the way up. See what that does. Okay, I think I already had something done there. Photo enhancement. Let's pull that up to 100. What does that do? So as you can see, um, I don't have a ton of noise. I don't need artifacts reduction, I don't think. We'll pull that up to see what it does. But you can see from the original photo to what it did here, it can really give you a good base to start. Like this did like 80% of the work for us. So that's pretty cool. So I just wanted to show you guys, I'm not going anywhere from Affinity Photo. I just want to show you what Photoshop is up to. And I'm hoping that Affinity Photo grabs onto some of this stuff just to make your workflow easier. I enjoy working on photos. It's fun. So I don't need a machine to do everything for me. It would just be pretty helpful for some cool stuff. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, tap, 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 tap the like button. And uh, if you're a Photoshop user, why don't you come on over and see us on the Affinity side? We're hanging out. Uh, all the coolest kids are doing it. Um, uh, anyways, yeah, uh, subscribe if you like what you see. I will see you in the next one.